this is CTA1 chapter 6 1 about the network layer protocols. We are now on layer 3 which is the networking layer and uh, here the purpose is to be able to send data from one network to another and to be able to do so we need uh, four different things. We need to be able to address uh, the devices um, and we need to encapsulate the packets, we need to route them and we need to de-encapsulate them again. On this level we have today two different types of protocol that we are using. It's either IP version 4 or IP version 6. In the older days there were other layer 3 protocols as well but I don't think we use them anymore. It's for instance uh, the IPX protocol from uh, Novel Network and we have the Apple Talk from Apple and we have the DECnet protocol. Um, but mainly today it's IP version 4 which is the one that we are all using. When we look at the IP packet we have the IP header and then we have the TCP segment which is included. Uh, the IP protocol is a connectionless best effort media independent protocol. And what does that mean? Well, that it is connectionless means that there are no checks that the packets are uh, received correctly. The IP protocol itself just sends the packets and then really don't care what happens to it. So, we does not know when we send a packet using the IP protocol if the receiver is present on the network, if the letter or the packet has arrived, or if it can even read the letter. Uh, and the receiver does not know anything about the packet coming at all. So it is connection-less. It's the best effort delivery, meaning that uh, it will try to find the best way through a network. Um, so it will make uh, like a, a guide or a, a guided way through a, a huge network and it will try to find the fastest and the best way. And the different network uh, routing protocols have different ways of deciding what is the best way through a network. Then it is media independent, meaning that the IP protocol does not see what kind of media that we are using. If we are using a copper cable or a fiber cable or a wireless communication for the IP protocol, that is uh, not something that it will handle. It is taken care of. Uh, on layer 1 and layer 2. We are encapsulating the TCP layer um, package which comes from the TCP, the transport layer, and then it's uh, sent down to the network layer where we add the IP header. If you look at the IP header, it is um, 20 bytes long. That is the overhead of the IP uh, header and then we have the payload which is the data itself. When we look at it the first thing we see is that the version this will just indicate whether it is a version 6 IP or version 4 IP. This is typically version uh, this is a version 4 IP packet so it will always say 4 in this uh, in this field. Then there's something about the header length. We have the differentiated services, which was the type of service earlier. This is a field that is used by quality of service, for instance. Then we have the total length. We have some flags that we can set. We have the time to live, which is important, because this is set to a number. And every time the packets go through a router, then this uh, time to live field will be incremented by one. This is to avoid packets uh, being, you know, uh, just sent out eternally through a network and never really reaching its destination. So that we will make sure that the packets will be deleted, we set the time to live. Then we have the protocol field, which will tell us what protocol are we working with on layer on top of it. Is it TCP? Is it UDP? Um, or ICMP or whatever protocol are we working with. Then there is a checksum and then we have the source and destination IP addresses. And if you look into Wireshark and look at these different um, packages and uh, explode the IP uh, 
version 4 header, we will see here that the version is set to 4, the header length is 20 bytes, uh, and the differentiated service field is set, uh, the flags, the time to live is 128. So when this packet reaches a router, it will be incremented by 1, so it will be set to 127, and the next router to 126, and so on. And this is a ping packet because I can see um, here on the protocol uh, here that it works together with ICMP. Yeah. First limitations of IP version 4, I guess you all know that, that uh, at some point, and this point has actually been reached, we don't have any more IP version 4 addresses. And also the routing tables on the internet are getting huge, which makes the routing process slow. And also, we have the problem of end-to-end -end connectivity because uh, what we have experienced with IPv4 that we don't have enough addresses, we are starting to using other different types of protocols to avoid this. And that's, uh, for instance, something called NAT, where we don't really see which end user has sent the packet. So we lose the end-to-end -end connectivity. IP version 4. So that is why a long time ago uh, IP version 6 was introduced, uh, which has an increased address space, it has um, less overhead, uh, we don't really need NAT anymore, it has integrated security, and it has a lot of addresses. This is a 120 bit address, which you can see gives us. 340 undecillion, I don't know what that is, but you can see the number of zeros here. So it has really a lot of addresses, whereas on uh, IPv4 we only have 4 billion or 4 milliard in Danish. When we look at um, the IPv6 headers, um, it has the header itself is larger, but it has uh, not that many flags. And it is a modular header that we can actually put extra thing on it if we need it. Um, so the, the header itself has been improved as well. Of course, the addresses, since they are much larger, uh, the header itself is larger as well. We can encapsulate the headers of IP version 4 or encapsulate IP version 4 packet into IP version 6 so they can actually um, we can use both IP version 6 and IP version 4 on the same network. Yep, and if you look at it we can also here see um, the, the content of the different headers as well here. Yep, and that was it.